we're going to talk about a very common algebra mistake that a lot of students make with square roots. Say you have the square root of x plus y. A lot of students will want to simplify this, and in their head they'll say, I really, really hope it's the square root of x plus the square root of y. That would be excellent. Unfortunately, not true. Let me show you why. Let's take the square root of, say, 9 plus 16. If we follow this, we would claim that that's the square root of 9 plus the square root of 16. And we would say, well, that's 3 plus 4, which would equal 7. But since the square root is a grouping symbol, we know that order of operations would say, do what's underneath first. If we add 9 plus 16, because they're like terms, we would have the square root of 25. And we know, since that's a perfect square, that the square root of 25 is just 5. Unfortunately, 7 and 5, not the same number. Only one of these is right. And I'm here to tell you that it is this one. So if you end up with a problem like this, There's nothing you can do with it. You can't split that up. You can, however, given x times y, split that up into the square root of x times the square root of y. But there's a big difference, and that's what you want to remember. If you have a plus or even a minus, this does not split. But if you're multiplying them together, you can split into each piece. So let's take a look at an example of that. So let's say we have the square root of, say, hmm, uh, 9 times 4. Now we know, let's see, if this is true, it should be equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 4. Well, that is 3. That is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Or we could do what's underneath the grouping symbol first. 9 times 4 is 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. These two things are equal. So we know that this is a true statement. So be careful. Do not split things apart underneath a radical sign if they are separated by an addition or subtraction sign. But go ahead and do it if you have multiplication. Good luck.